Hello, welcome. It is the Nisha Jackson Show. That's that's Nisha Jackson right there, and uh, and she's the smart one. I'm just here hanging <laughs> out. That's not true. Stop. Uh, <laughs> well, that's a good comment for this show that we're going to talk about today. That's a great comment. I'm, Why? Because we're talking about positivity and not putting yourself down. I wasn't and, putting myself down. I just said that you were smart. I didn't say I was stupid. I just said you were smart smarter one. than me. No, no, I'm not smarter than you. I'm actually not smart at all. I'm just a little bit of a scrapper. But go ahead. Go uh, ahead. No, she's very smart. Anyway, <laughs> uh, this is a good show because it's right up your wheelhouse. This is about uh, manifesting and, and, uh, and positive thoughts, right? Yes, and transforming, transforming your life. And I think today, Rusty, it's more important than ever that we listen to this stuff. And a lot of people think, oh, that's just hogwash. That's not, I mean, that that can't happen. I mean, what you're going to think your way into something. You're going to think your way into a great life. That's exactly what you're going to do. You're going to think it. You're going to breathe it. You're going to actualize it. You're going to, you're going to imagine it all the way until it happens because Wherever your brain is, there goes your life. I, I mean, you're you're yapping about something that's kind of off, a little bit goofy. I mean, have you ever yeah. seen it really work? Absolutely, it works for me all the time. Really? Yeah. Have you met Michael? I have. <laughs> it's, it's a perfect example. Was that one of your bad days? Or no? I <laughs> no, I love Michael. He's awesome. So it's so important that people get their thoughts right. And it's so easy just to be so negative. That is an old mindset. You need to put that away that life is drudgery. It's not drudgery. That's an old, worn out mindset. We need to become sensitive to light. We need to become sensitive to wanting to have a higher way of living, a more positive, uplifting way of living. And, and when we do that, it's so interesting how everything just starts to unfold for us. The things that we never thought could happen all of a sudden are right before our eyes. So we have an expert today that's going to be talking to us. She has a radio show, TV show. She's been through really difficult things herself. Mm -hmm. And we get to talk with her about some of her tips on doing this. All right. Before we get started, don't forget, go to NishaJackson.com, NishaJackson.com, OnePeakMedical.com. And also, if you would, please hit that subscribe button and uh, the notification button so you don't miss any of the upcoming Nisha Jackson podcasts. Hey, so today we have a special guest with us. Her name is Petia. She's joining us from Las Vegas, and she is a transformational coach. And I know you guys know from my previous shows that I'm very much into keeping your vibration high, really visualizing what you want. We've talked about transformation. We've talked about manifesting. We've talked about all sorts of things in the past that I feel have a lot to do with your health and have a lot to do with your destiny and where you're going and what you're put on this earth to do. So we have an expert with us today that's going to further drill that information into you. So welcome to our show, Pedia. Tell us a little bit about your past and, and what you're currently doing in your career as a transformational specialist. Oh, first of all, thank you so much for having me, Nisha. It's such an honor to be here. And uh, it's interesting, you know, when people ask you, like, what do you do? I feel what's changed the most in my life. It's who am I being, right? Because people, when they look at me right now, I have my podcast, TV show, traveling the world, hosting the retreats. And two days ago, I married the love of my life. So nice. Wow. Thank you. I am truly living the things that I dream of, but it's so easy to look at who am I being now versus see where I'm coming from. And hence, there's my accent from Czech Republic, very small town, um, small town mentality, small town thinking where I was growing up, mentally, physically abused by my stepfather. And wow. that led me into toxic relationships because most of my life for over three decades i felt unlovable and unworthy and something must be inherently wrong with me because of the relationships that i was attracting the jobs that i was attracting and nothing changed until the moment that i declared that something has to change because when i was 18 i attempted of suicide and when I was almost 30, I was getting back into that point of darkness, depression, and thinking like, why am I even here? Like, what's the point? Like, 
do I even matter? Would even anyone notice if I'm here or not? And I knew at that point that something has to change or I really don't want to live like this. So it took me almost three decades to realize that what has to be changing is really me. Right. So what was the tipping point for you? Because I think a lot of people today are feeling hopeless. Uh, They're feeling ashamed of their bodies. They don't like their life. They keep making one mistake after the next or one bad job after the next. They don't feel aligned with their purpose in life. I mean, this is a, this isn't, this is an epidemic, just how people feel like this. So what, what was the changing, what was the tipping point for you where you were able to really start realigning with your purpose in this life? Yeah, that's a great question, Nishan. I feel that for me, what it really was is I was very obsessed with the external, you know, I, I'm, I'm coming from a place that I was shamed for, you know, like don't eat too much and nobody will want to marry you and all these things. And that led me to eating disorder. When I was 11 years old, I developed eating disorder. It lasted almost two decades. Wow. So my health was suffering. My physical and mental health was suffering. So I feel that the tipping point was, like I mentioned, I was really feeling in a dark spot and really helpless and hopeless. And a big part of it was really my eating disorder because Mm -hmm. I was so exhausted. I was obsessed with what to eat, what not to eat, what will people think, what people want things. So again, I was outsourcing my worthiness and my happiness on the outside, the tipping wall point was for me when I was sobbing on my knees, when I was crying, I was so exhausted because another night of binging and purging, it, you're so exhausted mentally and physically that I didn't know if I can carry on. I felt, I don't know if you know this show, it's called Dexter. No, I don't. So he's basically like the good cop, but at night he's killing people and like, like, um, like cutting them on this, like, you know, like mass murder, but he's killing only the people that are bad, like drug dealers, mass murders, and people like that, and just throws them in the water. And he said in that series that he feels like a dark passenger takes over him and he cannot help it. The same way I felt about eating disorder, I didn't know what to do. I didn't know how to help it. And this was like a decade ago. It wasn't as easy as now as listening to the podcast or you go on Instagram nowadays or Facebook and there's like millions of experts for every single challenge in your life, right? A decade ago, it wasn't that easy. But luckily, I found Louise Hay and she literally saved my life. Yeah, she's pretty awesome. That was what really changed because I was begging for help and looking on Google and YouTube, like how to overcome suicidal thoughts, how to overcome depression, mm-hmm. how to stop with eating disorder. And Louise Hay came up with her self-love videos. And back then I'm like, what do you mean self-love? What do you mean loving yourself? Like I thought it, I just got to prove everybody else to love me and then I will be happy. Mm. So, that- so how are you, you, how are you using all of these things now to help other people? What, it, what is it that you were able to learn that now you can pass on to other people? We only have a total of 15 minutes for the show. So I want to make sure we get to some of the tips that you give people to create abundance in their life, to turn their, turn the, turn the ship around when they're headed down the wrong way. So d- let's talk just a little bit about that first. The biggest difference was when I gave myself permission to be me, to be mm-hmm. really unapologetically me, because like I said, I was over like looking myself and looking for everybody else but then we're all searching for our purpose like why am i here what's the point and i realized that the purpose to be here right here and now it's to be me so i started to build the boundaries saying no to the things that really didn't resonate with me i created my core values and then i took an inventory of my life 
I realized that my core values, and it's super easy exercise. I just wrote down on one side the, the things I don't stand for, things I do stand for. And then I chose three from what I do stand for, non-negotiables like loyalty, generosity, and growth. I took inventory of my life and I realized that the business that I built, the relationship that I built were not aligned with who I really was. Right. So after doing that, it was so much easier because does this align? Does, does this really is like a heck yes for me? And when it was, then everything started to open up. So that was like the biggest shift for me. And then everything started to be so much easier when we don't waste our energy on the things we think we should be doing. Right, right. That you don't really want to be doing or don't align with your sole purpose. So what are some of the things that I know you work a lot with your clients on creating and manifesting abundance? What are some things, I mean, certainly everybody's interested in that, or I would say most people are interested in that, as long as they don't have all these blocks associated with that. But we, let's talk about that real quick. What, what are your thoughts on creating, how to create abundance? What would you say to people about that? The first thing is you get to define what is your abundance. What does really abundance mean to you? Because what it means to me, it might not mean to you. For some people, it can mean own million dollar house and five cars and feel secure, right? For some people, it can be investing their money and not working. For some people, it can be freedom to do whatever, whenever they want. Right. And so first, it's really define what abundance means to you. For many of us, the piece of abundance will be prosperity and money. So what I'm teaching my clients, it's how to create the relationship, not only with themselves that comes first, but then with money and with people around them. Because very often the way we are treating money, it's not the way we want to be treated. So you get to ask yourself, the, the way I'm treating money right now, would I want to be treated? Am I stifling it? Am I sitting on it? Am I afraid? Am I trusting it? Or am I loving it? Am I like, I was treating it as a booty call. Now I want you. Now I don't. Now I want you. Now I don't. And it was like this back and forth relationship until I started to do a weekly dates with money, when I write letters to money, when I look at my short-term, long-term goals, when I look at my investments and income, uh, it, it started to be so much easier and money started to trust me. Mm -hmm. And I started to trust myself with money. That's when everything shift for me. So first step is define what abundance means to you. And second of all, if part of that abundance also is money and impact, because the more money the good people have, the greater things we can do together. Mm -hmm. Then you get to recreate and rewrite the relationship with yourself and check in with what are your beliefs about money right now. Right, right. Absolutely. So how important do you think it is? Because we've certainly talked about this on the show before. How important do you think it is to be able to visualize what it is or imagine what it is that you want? Let's say you really want to be able to be in a job that you're not currently in that really aligns with your sole purpose, like imagining doing, and you know, most people say, oh, well, you know, I'm just a dreamer. I wish I could do that, but they don't ever, ever just imagine themselves doing it. How important do you think that is? I think, well, I think it's personally, I think it's crucial for some of us visualizing things into the details work because some of us are specific and some of us are non-specific manifestors. Mm -hmm. That comes from the human design, which would be another long talk. But for example, I'm specific. So for me, you will see my house filled with the vision boards. Mm -hmm. I specifically get to see, I want a white car with a beige seats and I want this and this. I'm specific. Some of my clients are non specific they just want to they just feel into what would it feel like my desires they don't need to visualize white house and how you know with five bedrooms so checking in with yourself what feels right to you and when you created something in your life was it because you were journaling and did the vision boards or you just release into the universe and trusted what's in your highest good will come 
Right, right. Well, I totally agree with that. And I think um, c- catching your thoughts, because it's so easy to want something, but all you, and it's this way, but all your thoughts are going this way. You know, you really want to be in shape and you really want to lose weight and you really want to have a healthy body, but all your thoughts are about hating your body. Yep. So your, your thoughts and what you're imagining need to be aligned. So, you know, one of the things that, that I, I mean, I would say everybody struggles with is including myself is catching yourself and, you know, uh, recommitting yourself every day to this new way of thinking and this new way of imagining your life, because it, it's like your whole life starts moving in that direction if you can align those two things. So what are some things that you talk to your clients about that would help them catch themselves when they start getting into a di- disbelief pattern or, or a bad thought pattern? So a couple of the things that I love doing, the first of all is how does it feel like what you're thinking right now? Because you can think about something and it can be empowering and inspiring. It's like, oh, wouldn't it be nice if I have a healthy, nice body? Wouldn't it be nice if I'm in my ideal weight, right? That can feel inspiring. But if you are going to this down the spiral that doesn't feel good, just ask yourself, what would it feel better right now at this moment? You don't have to lie to yourself and say like, oh, I'm my ideal weight. Well, if you're not, but you can say, I'm feeling healthy. I'm feeling rested. I'm feeling rejuvenated. What would feel better right now? And then the second thing I really love my clients to do, it's called three by seven or seven by three exercise when you look into the mirror and tell yourself every single night before you go to bed some things you're proud of yourself some things you are committed to yourself and some things you forgive yourself for so this starts to create a healthier dialogue with yourself instead of the shoulds right like i should do that i should do that this creates a very healthy relationship with your mind and starts aligning your body with it too so seven things that you're are proud of yourself, proud of yourself. Seven. I like that. I like this three by seven. Yeah. Seven things that you commit yourself to and seven things you forgive yourself for. I love it. Yeah. That's really great. Um, so just in closing, what are a couple of things and, and maybe you can give your contact information to what are a couple of things you just want to kind of leave our audience with that, that gives them some hope that if they have been pushed down, like you said, you work with a lot of women that have been abused in the past or pushed down or really are, are ready to make some changes in their life, almost like a life coach. What, what are some things that you want to leave us with and just your contact information too? So the thing that I really want you to live with is remember you're perfectly made for your purpose. Very often we want to change. We wish for being different, looking different, being in different location, but the way you were created, it's perfect exactly for why you came here. So when you remember that, it gives you the freedom and liberty to be yourself. And the best place really to connect with me, it's my website, petiakolobova.com or my Instagram at Petya Kolobova. Everything is my name. It will be fun when I'm changing it after my marriage. So oh. <laughs> we're keeping everything the same. So those are my two favorite places. All right. We'll have that on uh, written on our show scripts too. So people will be able to see that. It was really nice connecting with you. I, I, you know, I wrote a book a uh, lot year before last called Brilliant Burnout. Mm. And it's about brilliant women that burn out. And the reason why I wrote it is women need to read it um, because so many women that are really brilliant and making changes in the world are burned out and they've lost their ability to keep manifesting and keep changing the world and keep making it a better place for for all of us. And this world needs strong women that are healthy. So every time I meet somebody like you, that's just out there on a crusade, using your gifts to help lift women up and to be able to help heal women and, and, and give them tools to get back on a right track. I just get so excited. So thanks for joining me today. And thank you for the work that you're, that you're doing. It's just right on. I love it. Thank you so much, Nisha, for having me and also for your work. I think it's so needed and so amazing what you're creating these days. All right. Have a great day. Thank you. 
So Rusty will do the outgoing and make sure that your contact information's on the show. Yes. And um, he'll he'll jazz it up at the end so everything sounds good, and then we'll let you know when it's airing. Sounds amazing. Yeah, let me know so we can repost it. Thank awesome. you so much yeah, for having absolutely. me. Absolutely. Yeah, Thank so you. nice to meet you. You're beautiful. And congratulations. Thank you so much. Thank Did you get married at the Elvis Love Me Tender Chapel? <laughs> no, we didn't. Some oh. friends were joking, like, you should do that. I'm like, no, I love a couple of his songs, but not that much. Come on, baby. <laughs> Come on, baby. <laughs> All right, thank you very much. Have a great All day. right. Thank you. Bye Have bye. a great day. Nice to meet you. Nice meeting you too. Bye. Bye. Well, that was good. I mean, I a nice positive. Good. And, and uh, you know, again, you've talked about the manifesting thing before and i know there's a lot of folks again like we i said earlier in the show does that really work right but i mean that's a big part of your life isn't it it is a big part of my life it's a big part of my daily life journaling and and really looking and visualizing about exactly what i want because the more the more that i have and the more that i'm able to learn and i'm able to kind of grow into the more i can help other people so healed people recognize the need and healed people are often the ones that are changing their thoughts and they're changing their patterns and they're changing their beliefs and they're able to really go after what they want and i'm not just talking about monetarily speaking i'm talking about their whole life i mean they're happy from the inside out it's awesome so i do think it's important i love that she's been through such difficult things there's nothing worse well there are things worse but it's hard to listen to somebody who's doing a lot of raw raw about this stuff that's never been through anything hard right and you know it it means a lot to me to see somebody like her transform herself like that and then being able to go and use that difficulty to share it and help with other people so it's awesome. I and loved if it. If you'd like to transform your life, her website is uh, here on the screen, as is nishajackson.com and onepeakmedical.com. Also, don't forget, please, to subscribe, 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 and let people know about the Nisha Jackson Show by sharing and hitting the little bell for the notifications so you don't miss any of the Nisha Jackson podcast. Until Not next time. One. Not what? even one. Not even Not, one. Don't even, don't don't even, even miss one. one. Not even one. <laughs> There's always something, even one little tiny thing you can learn. That's right. And what, 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 what do we charge you, $1,000? How much are we charging for this show? It should be like $1,000 a year. You think so? I it's think. Free. It's free. This is free information. It's giving it away. <laughs> All right. For Nisha Jackson, I'm Rusty Humphreys. We'll catch you next time here on the Nisha Jackson Show.